Greetings and salutations, YouTubers and malefactors. We're back here at Stoplogic Motorsports, and we're going to be doing a few things today. So, uh, full disclosure, this is actually probably going to be released early September, but it's August 9th, the day before I turn 37. And, uh, unfortunately, this Monday, I couldn't find any places out in the dirt to let me ride, but I found a uh, new website, and I'm going to put the link in the description. That actually shows you where all of the dirt and gravel roads are that might not show up on Google Maps. So take a look at that. It might be useful for your area. Be careful about some of the places though. One of the places I scoped out was actually like a uh, dirt walking trail around a subdivision. I can imagine how angry folks would be if I just uh, trundled my bike around their subdivision. So uh, today's projects are... We're finally going to get this Sahara Moto stuff because I'm about to put 75 miles on this bike. And, but we're in the Shinko uh, MX216 and we're going to take a 20 mi uh, 28 mile uh, dirt road loop with a little bit of uh, potential for single track action. So this is the stuff, Sahara Moto. You end up using... Uh, all right, 7.25 ounces in the front tire and 8.75 in the rear. Unfortunately, you only get 16 ounces on one of these bottles. So you wind up uh, half an ounce short in the rear for balancing, but balancing the rear is not as crucial. And just like Ride On, it has the same dosage calculator, and when you use tubes, you dose it 25% more. So, I guess I'll get the uh, selfless, uh, or the selfish shameless uh, self plug out of the way if you like this content like and subscribe if you don't feel free to criticize me harshly in the comments whip me beat me make me write hot checks or i also take payment and attaboys so unlike the ride on which says that this uh, it's set in seven miles this apparently takes 50 miles to set which a little bit strange but you know i'll take it the other claim to fame on this is that unlike uh, the Rhydon, it claims to plug holes up to uh, half an inch, which uh, I had some uh, experience with Rhydon with my Suzuki RM125 out at spokes and still got a flat out there. So I'm kind of uh, leery about this leak, uh, leak prevention properties of this. But I have used uh, similar products to great success on balancing tires. And this Shinko MX216 in the front definitely needs a balance. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this dosed in. And to dose it, basically, you roll your bike out. And generally they recommend putting your uh, valve stem either at like a 10 or 2 position. I'm going to double check. Huh. Place the valve stem in the lower half of the tire. Okay, so I like the 10 and 2 for ride on. This one says that you should uh, put on the lower side. We'll dose the full 7.25 up front and the remainder of the 8.25 in the rear and the real trick behind this is is that you pull the valve stem apply the goo then air it back up and the cool part about a lot of these uh deals is they supply you a metal uh a metal valve stem or a valve cap with a valve stem puller So I spared you guys, oops. I spared you guys a video of me actually spooning this tire on. This was actually a pretty easy tire to spoon. Only took me about 20 minutes, which was actually kind of surprising to me. All right, so we'll peel the top off. The other claim that this makes is that it's uh, safe for the environment, which Honestly, I'm not really, not to sound a bit harsh here, when I pick my products, I pick them solely based on their ability to do the job that I intend them to do. I'm not really concerned about any 
tertiary goals. And we'll do a video of dosing the front. I'm gonna cut the uh, rear because, well, quite frankly, you guys don't need to see me do the same thing twice. All right. One thing I've learned the hard way is whenever you cut these to dose, make sure you don't overcut. So you'll put your hose on first to see which line you kind of want it at, and there'll be that second line. Give it a good shake. Yeah. Slippery if spilled, no, <laughs> no dirt. Yeah, don't drink it, of course. And supposedly this stuff is good for uh, three years. It doesn't say to shake it, but a lot of times you'll have, uh, I guess like coagulants or emulsifiers in this that you wanna shake. Make sure that you're not just putting in part of a product. All right. So, unfortunately also, unlike the ride-on that has a graduated measure right here, you only have the eight ounce mark. So if we're doing 7.25, I'm gonna assume that probably about here would be good. So how Sierra Moto could, uh, or Sahara Moto could improve their product is have a actual marking system on the bottle. So we're gonna stop it. Yeah, right about there. Oh goodness. Well, he wasted a smidge of it. Probably not that much. Seven ounces, we'll give it a little, a little squeeze more. All right, that should be about seven and a quarter ounces. As I said, I'm not too sure because, well, it certainly does clean up easier than right on. All right, as I said, I'm not too sure that it's a perfect amount because, well, a little bit spilled out and the measurement system in this is a little, a little wonky. So it's usually recommended that if you're going to do a entire lube like this, that you put a bit of air through it. Normally I leave an empty bottle of Rhydon handy and one of those little rubber hoses.
and we're back so we put about a hundred and well this is 132 as the crow flies or as the uh, gps sends me it was actually about 108 miles and we're gonna get some initial impressions of this uh well long distance on the shinko 216 the dirt ride and i'm gonna get some better impressions when i take it to an actual single track but um all right so this is this is uh, about 100 miles right here we've definitely uh taken some of the knobs this thing definitely got up to temperature i think it handled great i don't see any excessive scalloping right off the bat it tracks relatively straight until you get into like places where you have grooved highway this thing will follow the grooves like an amtrak as far as the sahara moto goes 50 miles it was running really smooth once i actually got the temperature light to kick on on the bike i noticed there was a little bit of up and down oscillation back in the uh, tire not really a severe amount so it doesn't balance as well as ride on that's my initial impression of it like right on seems to balance a bit better and we'll go ahead and do a little little scientific test here while it's still slung around in the tire all of these uh goos and stuff take like about three or four days of not riding to settle back down into the bottom of the tube then you've got to ride kind of conservatively for a few miles so we're going to put this up on the stand real quick and see where it goes Oh, goodness. I still can't believe I got the bike to slightly overheat. All right. So here's our rim lock. And yes, you can balance and true a wheel on a bike on a stand. All right. So the Sahara Moto did. In fact, it appears to have balanced this tire, at least while it's still freshly slung. Because before it was just resting always at the bottom. Give it another spin. Whoa, let's not drop down. It's like a wheel of fortune here. Yeah. So this has actually somewhat tamed the beast. So, I would say this is a fairly successful experiment. I can tell this Tusk D Sport's having a little bit of a... A little bit of rounding off. This is probably about 250 miles on it. I'm going to try and stay off the bike until the race here in a few weeks. So, we're going to try and let this thing relax. Now on those dirt roads. Absolutely brilliant. Rear tire is great. Front tire is amazing. I can't wait to actually try this out on a track. So stay tuned for that video. But if you like the content, like and subscribe. If you don't, feel free to criticize me harshly. I take payments in attaboys and strong language. And see you guys on the next one.